The West have realized one simple thing when they're dealing with Africa, that do not deal with Africa as a block if you want to use, exploit them while lying to them with crumbles that you are giving them a good deal. Deal with them as individuals, deal with it as Lesotho, deal with it as Swaziland, deal with it as Kenya, deal with it as Ghana. You reduce their bargaining power at the table, they bring very little in terms of value, and that gives you an upper hand as a Western country to be be able to get your terms and conditions in the deal that favor you and are at the detriment of Africans. And African leaders are beginning to pay attention to how the West does business with them and the tricks that they use. And in realizing that these people have more power than us, they are saying that moving forward, if you want to do business with an African country, you're going to do business with it as the African continent. The terms are going to be negotiated by the African Union as a bloc to protect the interests of African countries that have been exploited, used and abused for years. We have made the decision that it is not intelligent for 54 of us to go and uh, sit before one gentleman from another place and I mean, and, and sometimes we are, we are mistreated. Yeah. You know, we are loaded into buses, like school kids, you know? And, and it's, not, it's not right. Well, you are it's summoned, not, you know? It's not, it's, not, so? it's, not, it's not right. So the decision that we have made as AU is that going forward, if there is going to be a discussion between Africa and any other country, we are going to be represented by the chair, the outgoing chair, the income, the bureau. Let us. Let Chairs us the commission and, and the chair. And and, uh, and and the chair of the Rex, and we have five Rex. That uh -huh. should be sufficient. Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome to another episode of our sessions. My name is Zendira Ganga. I really enjoy coming on here, having a conversation with you guys on Africa, black people, black empowerment, and how we can rise up and take our rightful place at the global stage. The most recent event that happened in Nairobi was the Mo Ibrahim Foundation, and the Kenyan president, William Ruto, was one of the key speakers at that event. And his speech has been going viral and rightfully so because I think Ruto just like the former president Uhuru Kenyatta and many other African presidents President Paul Kagame included has come out guns blazing against some of the things that are happening on the continent some are by our making and we continue to enable it but some we're being tricked into it and unfortunately we're too blind to see or we are too arrogant to recognize that we are selling ourselves short of our deal. This is something that Dr. Arikana Chihombori has spoken about a lot, right? So when you're doing business with an African country, most of these European countries are far developed. Their GDPs are double, triple, 10 times the GDP of developing countries. And so when you go to the negotiating table with them, they have the upper hand. You cannot compete. If you want to do a deal with America, you are on the, you're on the, America is receiving every good thing and you're receiving what is left of that deal, right? If you're doing a deal with British, even just look at the trade imbalance, you know, you take a lot from them, but they buy very little from you. And even what they buy from you, they don't buy at a good price, you know. There have been conversations of value addition for African um, natural resources for the longest time ever. And they will find a way of frustrating that process or just frustrating you at the global market that they're like what is this like what's happening here case in point ghana and codivo produce 70 percent of the world cocoa beans but the money from chocolate is in europe because of value addition why aren't we seeing value addition happening in ghana well there are structural challenges but also western powers do not want you to get in their bag and and sort of destabilize how they make their money and how they they rip you off of your natural resources on your sweat and perpetually keep you poor and dependent on them and even dr arikana chiombori said the same thing it's, it's the constant 
uh, uh, um, abuse and manipulation of Africa to ensure that these countries remain where they are and Africa remains where it is supposed to be. And you know, the Kenyan president was saying, those days are long gone now. You know, he had had a conversation with President Paul Kagame of um, Rwanda and they were in agreement that moving forward, if you want to do business with us, go through the African Union. We are going to negotiate for terms and conditions of doing business as a block. That not only protects our interests as individual countries, but also as a continent. Because some of these countries come and dump their goods here and now Africa is talking about the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. If you don't protect your interests as a block, then you've done nothing. You know, one country might be looking out for it for its interest, but it doesn't exist in Utopia, it exists in Africa. So moving forward, you want to have a conversation with us, you want to do business with us, go through the African Union. We have these meetings, Africa. Uh, U.S. meeting, Africa, Europe, Africa, Turkey, Africa, India. Europe. Now we are waiting for there is another one, Africa, Russia, and Africa, Japan, and Africa, Japan. We have made the decision that it is not intelligent for 54 of us to go and uh, sit before one gentleman from another place. And I mean, and, and sometimes we are, we are mistreated. Yeah. You know, we are loaded into buses, like school kids. You know? And, and it's, not, it's not right. Well, you are it's summoned, not, you know? It's not, it's, not, so? it's, not, it's not right. So, the decision that we have made as AU is that going forward, if there is going to be a discussion between Africa and any other country, we are going to be represented by the chair, the outgoing chair, the income, the bureau. Let us let chairs us the commission and, and the chair and and, uh, and and the chair of the RECs, and we have five RECs. Oh. That should be sufficient okay. for. I mean, a meeting of uh, maybe six, seven, maybe six, seven. Yeah. That should be able to represent Africa, and that is the position I am taking as the president of Kenya. For any other meeting that we are going to have with all these uh, requests that we have uh, a meeting between Africa and one other country. We respect the sovereignty of others. I think yeah. to ask for, to be, for uh, reciprocation is not to ask for too much. No. And for us to agree that let us have this kind of uh, setup. The only, um, uh, because I had a conversation with President Kagame and he, he actually led that particular position. I have had a conversation with Prime Minister Abiy. He believes very strongly that that should be the position mm. of, of our continent. Because, as you have said, if we, didn't, if we don't respect ourselves, nobody is going to respect us. And, and we should be able to take that kind of decision. Yeah. And part of that uh, respecting ourselves is when we say African problems, African solutions. We, we must be serious about the solutions. It cannot be rhetoric. It cannot be talk. It must be accompanied by what realistically and practically we are doing. And with our capacity. And you know, trade in Africa has always been such a big, big, big challenge. You know, if you look at Europe, if you look at Asia, intra-trade is over 50%. In Africa, last I checked, it's at a dismal 16%. And you wonder why aren't Africans trading amongst themselves? There are so many challenges. Some were created by colonialists, but we've refused to use common sense and outgrow some of these challenges. Does that make sense? For example, barriers. Who created barriers? And why do they still exist? Particularly for business, you know, movement of people, movement of goods, building of infrastructure. It's become so hard. Hard. I'll give you a practical example. Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, they, they, they are block. I don't understand why we don't have a fast rail system that ensures goods and people move very swiftly across the region. If you're moving goods from Kenya to Rwanda, it will take approximately 36 hours for it to get to the other country. That just makes it so hard. And 
if you have to transport it by air, it's expensive. And so some of the challenges, it's our own doing, but some of them were placed there and we continue to enable them, you know? And the West is so far up in the head of certain African leaders that they don't see the benefit of, of, of doing business with their fellow brothers and speaking in one accord. And President Ruto was narrating how one African country did not want to sign a pact with the other African countries to be able to do business, to trade, to speak in one accord as one block. And guess what? There are just 11 million people in a continent of over a billion people. Tell me how that makes sense. I told you this particular position of consolidating what we need to do and how we need to engage with the rest of the world was actually driven by President Kagame. Excellent. We have, we have asked, we, we've talked with many other heads of state and I think there is a critical mass emerging that we need to act differently. We need to work smart. Uh, let me tell you of an unfortunate situation. I visited one of the countries, I don't want to say which one, uh, and we were having a conversation about the um, economic partnership agreement between ESC and the EU. Yeah. The EU, 27 countries, 520 million people have agreed on what we need to do. ESC, we have sizable 170 million people, then uh, one country, and I don't want to say which one, told, uh, refused to sign. So he said, no, you know, we need to teach these people some lesson. So I'm listening. Your country has 11 million people. What are you going now to Now we teach? know the country. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So... <laughs> So what are you going to teach 520 million people who are supposed to serve as your market? Really? You know? So sometimes we undermine our own case yeah. because of not acting properly. So I want to promise you that uh, it is our challenge. The realization alone that we have a problem is halfway the solution from where I sit. So we, we know that we have to change stuff. We know that we have to act in, in a manner that makes sure that we secure our interests because the whole discussion, the whole discourse is about interests. What is our interest? How do we protect our interests? Because everybody protects theirs. Yeah. So this is um, uh, awakening and, and, uh, and I think the engagement of Africa with the rest of the globe is going to change. That is why, for example, we are having the Climate Action Summit, because we want to go to the UN. We want to come to the, the UN General Assembly. We want to go to COP28 with a, an African consolidated position, speaking with one voice, the whole lot of us, so that people can know we know what we want and we, we will not back this down. This is wonderful. If any value... So this discussion is, I think we reached some interesting commitment from... In that speech, President Ruto also called out our over-dependence on the West. And, you know, when we... We, we, we show the West that we can't do anything without them. We enable them to continue abusing us, but we also perpetuate the image and the perception that they have of Africa. Case in point, they are coming out and helping Ukraine in any way possible. They are sorting their mess as Europe. When something happens in Africa, instead of Africa standing up and sorting its mess as the African Union, we're like, oh my God, America, can you help us? Europe, can you help us? No. If you want to be respected at the table, if you want people to look at you as somebody who knows what they're about, if Somali has a problem, it should be sorted by the African Union, helped by all the other African countries in Africa. That's the only way the global West is going to start taking you seriously. We have the wrong architecture in the management of the Africa Union. Yes. Yeah? I'm glad you said that. Yeah, okay, not me. Yeah. Musa Faki, who is the chair of our Africa Union Commission, can do very little because we have retained all the powers as heads of state. Right. And yet, you cannot run one country and run the continent of Africa. <laughs> right? We 
seriously need an interrogation of the management of the African Union. Today, we cannot even support Somalia. We are, we are waiting for EU to give us $85 million. $85 million. You know, we, we cannot fund it as EU. It is stupid. I mean, it, my brother. It is my, madness. My, so, yeah. so the are you telling me 54 countries, 60 years after independence, they cannot manage 85 million to sort out Somalia, which has no government? <laughs> eh? let, let me. Let me I, I, I just want to ask him, I, sorry, I want to ask you a question. <laughs> He's my brother, but we, 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 we need to talk frankly. How many African countries did not pay the dues <laughs> this year? <laughs> Please tell us. Don't name, but tell us how many. How many countries did not pay their contribution? The contribution huh? this year? I think the majority pay. Majority pay. This is the answer of the diplomat. Yeah, let, that, let us not put Musa in trouble. No, so, no, no, but these are facts. It's not, it's not, I mean, I'm not naming countries. I'm saying African countries do not respect their own union. If you don't respect your own union, nobody respects you. Full stop. And then, the same guys who don't pay the contribution, they go to this international meeting and say, oh, African sovereignty, uh, African solution for African problems, Africa this, Africa that. Come on, guys. What is this? Hmm. We need to be credible. If we believe we have an African union, we need to have an African voice, we need to do it. Anyway, guys, let me know what your thoughts are on President Ruto's viral speech. Do you agree with him? What are some of the things that stood out for you? And I'll see you again next time.